Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about the importance of being social to a social animal like a human. And it's everything that's gone on since COVID hysteria has occurred has in some sense helped us underline the degree to which we're social animals and how important it is to us. So let's think about lockdowns. Lockdowns put you in your home in relatively small numbers, just with your close family or some people living alone by themselves. This cuts off you know, one of the most important parts of your life, your social interactions. Social distancing puts you potentially in a restaurant, but it's separated by six feet. You have bars, which are basically barren places with three different couples in the farthest corner in the middle with a plexiglass in between. Nobody wants to be there. It doesn't feel social. It doesn't feel like the kind of place that makes a bar a bar in the first place. And masks. Masks cover over your human social identity. They prevent you from emotionally expressing, which is the underlying language that we evolved to truly communicate and compromise and come to, uh, to sort of mediate our social interactions well before hundreds, you know, tens of millions before we had uh, proper language, which is just in the last hundred or so thousand years. All of these things completely undermine what it is to be human and fundamental to, be, to, to what it is to be human is being social, highly social. And in fact, one way of talking about that, and the reason I'm holding this is because I talk about you know, our emotional expressions in this book, in fact, the colors. The reason we have color vision in the first place is because it's social vision. It, it's, our color vision is peculiar, and I've argued and provided evidence that, in fact, it's so that you can read the emotions and health and state of others around you. Emotional expressions and sociality fills lots of, of what we're designed um, for. And one way to communicate that is music. Now, ask yourself, how often do you listen to music? How important is music in your life? For most of us, we're happy to listen to music all day long. In fact, the only reason I don't have music going on at the moment for this video in my, my living room is because it's, if it's in the background, YouTube or some of these channels will just will, will mute the entire thing because I haven't copyrighted that music. I am listening to music in the car. As soon as I get up, there's music on. Most of us are listening to music 24 hours, you know, all waking hours in some sense. It's fundamentally important to us. We would, there's no other auditory sound or even visual stimulus that you're willing to stare at all day long in the same way that you're willing to have music in the background. Why is it so important to us? Because it's social. The kinds of things that give us the greatest evocative moments in our lives are typically because they have the sounds and signs and signature of other humans in a social setting because those are the most important things in anybody's life. They're the ones that you need to mate with. They're the ones that are more likely to kill you than some jaguar. They're the stuff that matters. The human stimuli are the stuff that matters. So one of the things that I argued in my earlier book, Harnessed, was in fact that the sounds of humans' movement are in fact part and parcel of what music is. Music has culturally evolved over time to sound like a human moving evocatively in your midst. It's a story of a human coming towards you and moving away. The loudness modulations of music are just like the kinds of loudness modulations we evolved to detect. Loudness means proximity. Softer means farther away. The Doppler shifts that we hear in real life, both from fast things like bees or things going by, as well as slow things, are, which are in fact audible to us, tell you the directions that things are going. The pitch modulations, or the melodies in real life of things that move around you, tell you the directions that they're moving relative to you, even with your eyes closed. The melody in these songs are, in fact, I've argued in the book, have all the, the signature features of Doppler shifts over time. The tempo of the music tells you the, the gait, and the beat is just the gait of a human moving. That's what the beat is, and the particular rhythmicity tells you what the person is doing in your midst, the specific kind of behavior. Music is the sound of humans moving evocatively or emotionally around you doing certain kinds of behaviors. Music is bringing a social, is a social uh, 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 diversion. We do it because we want to be social. We want other sounds of people moving around us at all times. That's what it is to be human. The fact that music is as close to your life as it is, is because other humans are fundamental to, be, to, to having a good life. I want you also to appreciate that music and the arts, which fundamentally rely on these social senses, are at risk now. Everybody's gigs are up. I get 
texts and tweets all the time from folks, from musicians. They haven't had a gig in 10 months. They're out of work. The kinds of creativity that you want from these artists to provide these great musical experiences which tap into our social sense are on the decline. I hope you had a better appreciation for what music is and why it's important to us and why social life is crucial to our life. That was Ravino Optic Science Moment. <laughs>